Sorry about that. That's okay. Sorry about your door. Sorry for hitting the door. <laughs> That's okay. I really am sorry about that. Yeah. I have spent more time in the last eight months planning and resourcing for this gym more than any direct project in my entire life to this point. So like we have the lease signed, we've paid our deposit, we have all the resources and equipment priced, and we have contracts with the vendors. Like I even drew up a picture and diagram of our facility with all the equipment in it. Like <laughs> everything is planned. And like to tell you the truth, I'm just tired of talking about it. I just want to execute at this point. I'm jealous of my brother who like can actually walk into the facility and see what we're going to be working with. I just want to execute that and I miss my dog. So it's Sunday right now, Sunday evening. Commissary is closed tomorrow. So I'm going to go grab chicken because I don't feel like eating tuna and protein powder all day tomorrow. And then I'm hitting the gym. And they are completely out of chicken. 1871 please yep. you don't realize how much you miss like blue skies and clouds until it's not here for a while so like all of spring all of summer it was kind of like overcast and you didn't see any of it you could probably tell from, like, from my videos but now that the fall is here it's like the pollution has gone away and it's blue skies clouds all the time and it just makes you feel that much better can you feel all this energy pumping your For those of you that are like college students or on a tight budget, this is like the perfect meal for you. There's like certain times when I can tolerate tuna and I cannot. This is one of the times when I cannot. But if I'm going to eat tuna, this is the way I'm going to do it, just to spice it up a little bit. So this is two servings or two cups of jasmine rice and then two cans of tuna. There's about a handful of spinach in there, a tablespoon of coconut oil, and then about two tablespoons of sweet relish. This is no sugar added, just sweetened with Splenda. And then the season I use is this mesquite uh, grill mates. So it's cheap. Honestly, like this whole bowl right here is probably $2 tops. Yesterday we got called into work at 2 a.m. We worked till like 7 p.m. So that's the reason there's like two days in between this vlog. The vendors we're using for the gym equipment, uh, right now we have hammer strength for all of our machines. We have Troy for our dumbbells to go five to 150. We have Life Fitness for our jungle gym, which is like the eight station system that you see in gyms where you can do lat pull downs, low rows, they have the cables. We're using Rogue Fitness for a wall mount that has three stations where you can like overhead press, squat, deadlift. We have two additional squat racks by Rogue. Our competition style benches are through Elite FTS and all of our weights are through Elite FTS. One question that I keep getting that I feel I need to touch on is people keep asking what's gonna happen if the gym fails? And for the longest time, like I've wanted to open a gym honestly for the past like 10 years. Ever since I was late in high school, I wanted to open a gym, but there was always that thing that held me back of being risky. Like opening a gym is a very risky business because there's so much competition. Uh, there's the ability to fail because there's so much overhead in the beginning. I mean, just to start up the gym itself, we're spending about $100,000 on equipment, on the lease, on small renovations, on rubber flooring. There's a lot of things that go into building and preparing a gym. And that's why it's so risky. And then when Bear Performance Nutrition, our supplement company started growing, we needed to find a new warehouse and facility for that. My brother and I started talking. And originally the plan 
was to just have a gym where we could film videos and ship and distribute our products out of. So we weren't gonna have any members. And we got to the point where we could open this facility and not have any members and still be profitable. And I'll tell you kind of our numbers that we're dealing with right now. In Round Rock and the location we have, the size we have, zoned industrial, we're paying just around $9,000 a month for lease. That's without utilities, insurance, or anything else. We're paying back our loan. We're able to make those payments just with bare performance nutrition alone and no members. Uh, so we got to a point where we were able to make a decision based off our income with our supplement company that we could open a gym and be profitable even if we had zero members. So we're going to put a cap on the members of 400 to minimize it from getting so full and create that community feel and still be able to cover our cost through the gym alone. So I'll be completely honest, when we first got to Korea, I lost like my deadlift and strength training motivation because for me, the way I train is dependent upon where I'm at, like what kind of gym I'm training at, who I'm training with, uh, and here just wasn't doing it for me. So when I get back to Texas, I want to put more emphasis on strength training again and deadlifting and squatting and bench pressing. That's kind of way we're building our gym. And my all-time PR that I hit like the week before coming to Korea, 6.15 on a sumo pool. I cannot even begin to describe to you like how excited I am to start pulling with real iron plates again. But typically when I do max effort deadlifts, I won't use uh, straps depending on what kind of bar it is. Like the bar I was using back at my gym that you just saw in that clip, that was the Rogue Ohio Power Bar. And then knurling on that was just so good that I could use a hook grip. And that was like the preferable method for me back then. Here, like the bar is a little different, so I typically use straps. Uh, but the program I was working on today so I did one set of 405 for 12 reps, and then I went into uh, four sets at 465, and then back down to 405 for as many reps as possible. So in the army, we can now roll our sleeves, which at first sounded really cool, it's a little tight, it's a little snug. There are only two more weeks of videos while I'll be in Korea. Cause I have to finish filming and everything a little bit early before I leave because I have to close down my phone plan, which is how I use the internet. I have to move out of my room, pack everything up. So two more weeks of Korea vlogs, and then the video after that will be back in the States. When I first found out I was coming to Korea, I was pretty convinced that YouTube channel was gonna die off, and that when I came back, bare performance nutrition would be nothing, or nothing left of it. And what I've done while being here is the complete opposite. I'm not telling you this to show you what I've done or what I've accomplished, but to show you that there's no time, nor distance or relation that can keep you from doing the things you wanna do. I know you have heard it 100 times more, by 100 people that if you put hard work in and you just keep working, you will be successful and you can reach your dreams. And I'm here to tell you that it's not bullshit at all and it actually works. Like hard work actually works. I've spent all my free time while being here building my channel, my business, growing a new business. I've grown the channel by more than 70,000 subscribers. We've made more than seven times in revenue in 2016 with Bear Performance Nutrition than we made in 2015 and I started a new company. You literally can do anything you wanna do with the time that you have if you just put in the work. At the end of the day, if you decide that you don't wanna do it or you're not motivated enough or it's not for you, then that's something you have to live with your entire life. And when you're 80, 90 years old and you look back and you say, damn, I should have done that, I wish I would have done that, that's the decision you made at one point in your life. I'm not trying to motivate you or persuade you to do something but ultimately, I hope that by watching my channel, you've seen what I've done while being here, away from home, in a different time zone, really dealing with frustrations of 
contacting manufacturers and working with people back in the States that you can still do it no matter where you're at with no matter how much time you have. All right guys, so that's the video. I'm gonna link my brother's YouTube channel in the description box below because if you wanna see like more of the gym before I get home, he'll be walking through everything on his channel. Uh, so like he'll actually walk through the gym and start setting everything up before I get home. The day I get home, the next day we're laying the floor and putting equipment in. So like as soon as I'm back, we're hitting the ground running. So I will talk to you guys in the next video.